Hello my lovelies, continuing in vlog style, I stamped five yards of fabric this morning and I am currently sewing tape around synthetic whalebone strips that go in bodices. Why? Why are you doing that, you ask? Well, I have a whole bunch of bodices that I made over the last couple months, I guess three or four of them, that I did not put the appropriate amount of boning in them. And every time I wear them, I spend all day pulling on them, pulling them down and straightening rumples because boning strips really do matter when you wear bodices all day long. It keeps everything straight, keeps everything tidy, and keeps you from futzing with your clothes. And when I made them, I didn't have enough of these strips made up, and I cut a whole bunch of them, and I sat them in my sewing box, my handy dandy little sewing box here, that lives next to my sewing chair. I'm on the couch right now. because So I cut a whole bunch of them back when I was making bodices and I got them, I got like three made, but I have just done three just now watching a video. I have one in my hand and I have three more to do. And my thought was that I've been kind of overdoing it lately. Um, I have like 46, 47 days left for Great Western War to prep, but I need to do things in just the mornings that are hectic and busy and moving around because as soon as it gets hot, I'm not really very useful and I get cranky and I get tired really quickly. What I'm doing with these is I take a strip of tape and I got this tape from Burnley and Trowbridge. And when you fold it in half, it goes nice and tidily over this um, quarter inch synthetic whalebone. I basically make a little bit of a cap at the end. I make like a, I fold it over like this, like that. And then I fold it again like this, like that. Can see that? And then I sew the whole thing together at the end so that I end up with this little cap. And then I just tuck in the synthetic bow bone into that little cap. And then I just very carefully, not even very carefully, I just grip it with my finger and I stab stitch down and up again, all the way up and down the length. Well, mostly just down to one end, the length of the tape around the boning. I used to whip stitch them, but I found that they are a little loose inside the casing when I do that because the casing stretches just a little bit. So there's a little bit of wiggle room. And if you stab stitch it, you're actually stab stitching see if it'll show. You're stab stitching inside that line and that means that your boning doesn't move or wiggle inside the casing when it's sewn into the bodice. Today, this evening's plan is to work on these boning pieces. Only thing that's left in my um, scrap box here is um, a pair of um, pajama pants <laughs> that I need to fix a intimate area with a patch and once that's done I will be ready to address embroidering a couple more paws on uh, VLEF's doublet outfit. Um, I don't know what stitch I'm going to do for the last couple paws. Um, I've done a buttonhole stitch. I've done um, turkey work. I'm trying to think I've done a couple different stitches, so I just have to look at what I've already done so that I don't do it again, because I want all of them to be a little bit different. I really want to do a split stitch, but it'll take forever. 
so I'm not sure if I should. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess the other thing that I'm working on kind of on the sideline here artistically is figuring out what classes I want to teach at Great Western War. I think I'm going to do two. I had started with the idea of just doing one, but I think I'm going to do two. Um, and let's see, what else? Well, I think that's it for now. I think I'm going to go back to my movie. I just wanted to touch base with you and do a little bit of a vlog. I haven't really done much of a vlog from the couch before, so I thought it would be a good time to chit chat with you and let you know what's going on. Um, oh, one other thing is I am tentatively um, working on getting Patreon back up and running. Well, it's never been down, but it's never, it's, I've been terrible at maintaining it. So there's not a lot of stuff on there. So I am working on putting stuff up on Patreon and specifically stuff that is much more maker specific if people wanted to submit for tiers that make a little bit more sense. Things that, you know, you might actually wanna see. Anyway, well you have a beautiful day and see you next time I vlog. Okay, so I've just cut two lengths that are 84 inches long, and that is to, gonna give me the length for my gomlek, which will be 42 inches, sorry. Yeah, 42 inches long. And this fabric is wide enough that, and I'll show you later after I wash it, um, what that looks like when I cut it out. But in the meantime, I'm taking these two lengths and I'm gonna throw them in the wash and I'm gonna make sure that all the sizing is out and they are shrunk to the proper, um, as much as they're gonna shrink. And then I'll be back. So what I'm doing now is um, my husband Luke needs a new linen shirt for our event. And I have a whole bolt here of um, linen and I'll put the weight and the kind that it is up on the screen. But what I'm doing here is I'm basically guessing how much yardage I'm going to need um, of the linen on the bolt. And if I take the linen and I roll it out on the table, 
I can kind of do a pretty good guess. So linen shirts are pretty much all rectangles and squares just gathered. So I'm going to take the edge of the linen like this, and I'm going to kind of measure up. So I know that this is, and I use a pencil on linen. I don't use the colored markers on linen generally. I know that that's about as far as it's gonna be needed on the main body times two. And then I can make a pretty good guess that I'm gonna need double that for the sleeves. So that's one sleeve. Another sleeve and not quite another sleeve. So I need to cut double plus a bit to give me the amount of fabric that I'm gonna need. myself enough room for sleeves I'm gonna cut 88 inches that's cut two lengths 44 long and they both end up being right about 43 long I have doubled the lengths so there's two lengths I've lined up the sides and now I'm going to line up this side and this gauze fabric is kind of stretchy and instead of ironing it, I discovered that that's kind of a pointless, futile act. So what I've done is I am going to lay the pattern out right here. And it lines up pretty good. It actually lines up pretty good here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to use my orange fusion pen and I am drawing the armhole and the gore because they are integrated and I'm going to start the angle and if you see right here the angle goes off the paper so what I'm going to do is I am going to use my yardstick and I'm going to take that little mark from where the angle starts. And I'm going to change the angle just a smidge to accommodate the width of the fabric I'm actually using. Okay, so that's gonna give me the angle. Now, the other thing that's going on here is I've got a sleeve. 
So this sleeve fits just about right inside this armhole, okay? Now I know that I can How did I do this last time? <laughs> I think I used a whole other section of fabric is what I did. And that width is just about right. Didn't I do that? Now I'm concerned as to what I did. I know I don't want to waste this fabric. I know that I want to have one or two that have smaller sleeves. So I'm gonna go ahead and plan on that. And I can sew these together. So out of this whole thing, I have a pair of sleeves, I have the body of my gomlek, and this is all I have in scrap. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is the neckline. And I don't need a very big neckline, but I do need an opening goes down the front and that'll give me a really high neck opening and that is one gomlek so the pattern of the gomlek is or the one that I'm using is one that I created. Um, I measured from neck to waist and I've given myself a waistline. This is the built-in gore. Um, you can create a gomlek where your triangles are a separate piece and you add those in. There are no front triangles in a gomlek. They're just sides as far as I've been able to find. Um, this can also be its own piece if you want to. If you want to do a straight if your fabric's pretty narrow, you can always do one piece here and then do these pieces separate. My sleeve is a, um, 
I fixed the pattern on the first. <laughs> um, I did at one point use an underarm gusset, but when I did the fit for this gusset, gusset if you see, um, this is basically two inches and that's half of the four needed. And that is two by three, uh, which basically works out to be two by six. And that worked out really well when you look at one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know, um, the, the four by four works, but to keep the traditional Ottoman gomlet shape, it needed to be a little bit different. Now, there are some gomlet patterns out there that you will see that they put the hip bump and they don't do the straight angle. Um, you can do that. I just found that I like this fit better. It fits me. It fits more of what I'm looking for. So I am, um, I have a 32 bust and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine times two, not, sorry, nine times two is 18. 18 plus 18 is 36. So I'm 32 around at the bust, and this is 36, because if you take this measurement right here before the gussets, and you multiply that times four, you get 36. And that's exactly right, and then you add two more inches on the edge, which is actually four, which will equal 40 all the way around. That'll give me plenty of room for movement, but also it won't be a sack. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So from the middle of the back of my neck to my waist is um, 15 inches, and that's how many inches are here. Um, a little bit lower, in the front, obviously. Um, and then I have mine, so I'm five foot four and a half, and I found that a, 40, a 42 long gomlac gets it down below my knees, um, but is also not cumbersome and I can still move in it and it's still breathable and really comfortable. So we're gonna do that again with this piece of fabric. sewn the sides down. Here's your gomlec. It's the wrong side out. You want to take your sleeve and turn it right side out. Okay. 
Now I'm going to find my shoulder. So this is right side out, this is wrong side out. I am going to stuff my sleeve into the armhole. That will mean that this is the right side and this is the right side and we're gonna match them together. Now, I don't have shoulder seams on the gomlek because it's one straight piece of fabric. So I have to lay it down and find. So I pin the shoulder first and then I pin at the bottom where the underarm seam is. Okay, so I have two pins and you're gonna see that the armhole looks like it's bigger than the sleeve, that's okay. You actually pin down, so I'm gonna pin one side all the way down, keeping the sleeve and the outside fabric together all the way to the corner. So that corner right here, that's the bottom where the gore is, where the built-in gore is. Now, I'm going to pin down the other side all the way down. To that corner. Now, this is where You take the gore fabric and you kind of pleat it in, kind of make it flat. And that's going to give you your underarm ease. And then you'll sew all the way around there. And because of how you've set it in, it'll sew all the way around. You don't actually have any corners to sew. So the sleeve, right side to right side, this is the wrong side. This is the inside of the garment. And the reason you want to put your sleeve in this way is it means that your seam to your arm will be on the inside of the fabric. And, you know, honestly, it probably will help anybody who does this. The best thing I've ever found to do is, on any garment, is to line up, right? And that, so you know you put the correct sleeve on the correct side. <laughs> line up how it's going to look. Okay, so that is going to go on this sleeve. Because I know this is an underarm before it angles. And this angle is the underneath of the sleeve. So I am going to open my armhole. I'm gonna stick my sleeve in there. You know, I really struggled with sleeves until I figured this out. I actually, I don't really remember I actually don't think anybody showed this one to me. I just kind of figured it out. And if it helps somebody else, great. Okay, so that's the shoulder. This is the underarm and I wanna match the underarm to the middle seam under the gusset in the underarm area. And I found that the best thing to do is to pin from the top down and see where this angle is, it's that sharp angle. You're gonna 
put a pin in it, but you're not gonna do anything with the underarm gusset yet. You do that last. So pin here. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the other side. Now this is the, the back because you have the arm, the hole here for your head. So I have sewn in my sleeve that I've set in. I've sewn this sleeve in. And you can see that the sleeve is still inside the gomlek. Okay, so I'll show you. So the sleeve bits are still inside the gomlek. This is the front. It's all sewed up on the sides. So I am going to turn it right side out. And you can see that the sleeve is correctly set in. Got the pleating underneath the arm, so you have ease and underarm. Same for the other side. My sleeves are perfectly set. Now all I have to do is sew the neckline. I have to sew the sleeves and I have to do the hem. And that gomlek will be done. I'm gonna really quickly just fold over the bottom a couple times to hem it in. I am going to do the sleeves and the neck by hand. And I'm going to sew this other gomlek together and then I will have two more gomleks completely out of the way and off my plate. Yay! I think I'm struggling with motivation um, and I think I know why. So I thought I'd figured out the pattern for the sleeveless zibbon and so I, I made one, it fit, it was great. I adjusted the pattern to make sure that it would work and I cut it out of this gauze. This gauze is so stretchy. Um, I'm not a knit fabric sewer by any stretch of the imagination, that fabric intimidates the bejiminis out of me. I can never get it to work right. I put the correct needle in the machine. I put my feed dogs correctly. I just can't get it to work. Um, so I've been treating all of the zibbon that I have made so far. I just put sleeves on them because I was like, I, I just, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, and I went ahead and I was leaving this one to kind of the last one. Um, and I put some stamped fabric for my facing and I got it all done and I thought, oh, I'll just throw it on to make sure it fits. And it, the armholes are like stretched to ridiculousness. So I kind of lost my momentum because literally I have to figure out this much of how it's stretched out. So I think today, to kind of help me with my rhythm, I am going to restring my new corset. I'm gonna put buttonholes in a petticoat and I am going to work on my hats, my pillbox hats. And I think I'm gonna do that today. Um, 
I did get my caftan started. So I got that cut out and the sleeves cut out. Um, and all those zipping over there need buttons. So I think I'm going to work on piddly stuff today because I'm having major issues with the sleeveless zibbon and I have two. I have one that's still downstairs on my thing that I'm um, putting in all of the facing. So I'll leave you with that.